Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka International Nail Artist and Educator here. And today we are going to do acrylics. <laughs> yes, we are going to do a sculpted uh, acrylic nails on my left hand. And uh, it will going to be a glitter encapsulation with some kind of flakes, oranges and pinks. And actually it blinks pretty nice. Um, so I hope you will really enjoy watching this tutorial. If you do, let me know down in the comments below and I might try to do more acrylic tutorials, more of a structure, like I'm kind of like a pink and white person when it comes to the acrylics, uh, or like those extreme long stiletto nails. Uh, I would use quite a lot of acrylics for that as well. But anyway, let's start doing those uh, beautiful nails. and sparkly one so depend how depending how the lights reflect on it it looks different kind of like a cinderella uh, cinderella nails and i have done it this once and guess what it is yes acrylics uh, uh, yeah and i will show you how i sculpt the acrylic nail as well it's nothing overly too complicated for especially for those of you who works with the acrylic um, I'm kind of using acrylics once or sometimes really. The last time I picked up my acrylic brush was nearly a year ago. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to use a tiny wee flakes of the foil. And I just want to show you like it's a not transfer foil. It's like a kind of an iridescent foil. So it wouldn't transfer on the nails. So I just need to kind of pick up uh, bits and pieces of this foil into the clear acrylic. So you just cut them into the triangles and I think triangles are nicer like but they can be kind of absolutely random shape. We have to apply the nail form and prep this nail. So um, I'm just using my nail file to give a couple scratches to my natural nail. And this nail is a perfect one for applying the forms because there is a kind of a struggle with it. I've got quite high hyponychium on this nail and actually I just close that. Um, just because I've got really high hyponychium on it and uh, also I've got quite deep nail folds as well so it's not an easy job to apply forms on me so just to remove the shine from my natural nail then the next step to remove the dust and dehydrate with the blue scrub blue scrub is a nail dehydrator and you can see it the skin like uh, I cannot file it as, as an living tissue underneath of my nail um, so the forms I'm going to use, that's a new perfect sculpting forms. And actually the roll is almost at the end, so they roll not nice now. Um, I'm just peeling the... And apply it on the back of the form. And now we need to cut the form. So we need to cut the form like so it fits in underneath of my high hyponychium. And that's like a wee either triangle or just like an oval shape i'm just preferring usually cutting an oval shape just like this okay i can double check it if this is going to fit in yes it is going to fit in and also i like to pre-pinch the forms and then pinch it with the application so i tend to cut it on the sides as well a little bit and now i can pre-pinch it in between my fingers so nice nice roll in so this way we can get a really nice c curve and then close my form only at the at the end you don't want to fully close the form and now i can slide underneath of the nail that's exactly the same how i apply the forms on the client uh, so i don't like this technique uh, I, I just quite like this technique uh, when i kind of slide it underneath of the nails uh, searching for the middle so that's the middle line, nice and in the middle. And then I want my out form also to, now you can see it is dropping down. So I need to lift it higher up a little bit. I like my form to kind of go straight. And then when I close the tabs, the forms lift up a little bit. I can even lift it a tiny bit higher. So this has to be always kind of open. So this way I know I'm right shape. Okay, now I'm squishing this form. This is a crooked finger as well, like going into the side. So it's a fantastic, fantastic one to apply the form. Okay, and once my form is secure, I'm squishing it from underneath. So then the form goes even higher. 
and this is a perfect fit. Okay, I can squish it even a little bit more. My next step is, because during the form application we could touch the nail or I'm applying the nail prep, wait for it to dry and then I can apply the Universal Airbond. And I love Universal Airbond because you have seen me guys normally working with the gel and uh, this Universal Airbond is called Universal because it can be used for all the systems. So it can be used for both gels, acrylics and uh, poly gel as well. So it gives a really nice adhesion of the product to the natural nail. And I'm going to just pour a little bit. I like this tab just because like I'm, I'm not the fan of the smell of the acrylics. Um, so I'm just using the uh, acrylic liquid. It's HEMA free. And in my case, it is pretty important because I'm prone to allergies. So I quite like using this one because I can use it kind of safely on my nails. And then size 8 oh, brush uh, is a really old one now. The packaging has changed as well and I'm still using uh, this one. And we're going to use also some electric flakes. Um, and they are from Neo Nails. But the Born Pretty have got the similar ones and I might give you links to that because I just got them in the shop in Poland. And some clear uh, Neil Perfect acrylic powder. Okay, so my Universal Airbond has dry really nice. I'm going to actually pull this flakes down just so they easy to pick. Okay, and I'm just dipping in my acrylic brush and I'm kind of dipping in quite strong to get out of any air which might be in there. And then dip it in, in my paw to pick up the decent size bit. I quite like to work more into the wet side just because you know guys I'm, I'm the gel girl so the, the wetter the product is for me the better and I'm constantly going to introduce fresh monomer okay so first of all I want to build up my free edge and encapsulate those glitter flakes so I'm introducing fresh monomer and we want to get a nice coffin shape nails up to the letter M. Okay, one side, other side, brush it in to get a bit of length. And then just smooth it. it. So I clean my brush and now I'm just kind of pressing it harder so it adheres nicely to the natural nail. I've got still lots of time to play with my product just because I have been introducing those um, monomer. Just so I can get a nice shape. Okay, I'm going to pick up those tiny wee flakes. And I love how kind of orangey it goes. Maybe one more. Okay, now I'm just going to pick up another bit to build up a little bit more sparkle into my nails and I have dipped it in with this pink one. So I'm just really want to kind of fill up those empty spaces with the pink sparkle. And I really like um, that different lights uh, kind of get it, it um, reflects different. So sometimes it looks kind of almost clear and sometimes it looks really nice and pink and orangey. And now I just need to build up my apex. And encapsulate the clear, uh, the, the glitter. 
So I have picked up a medium sized bead and then tip of my brush to flatten it around the cuticle area. So this part is done with the tip of the brush. And then just brush the rest of the product on the free edge. So it encapsulates the glitter. I also like the acrylics. Uh, the only reason I would say that I like the acrylics, and uh, so that's my nail almost finished. And uh, the only reason why I like the acrylics is that you can really nicely pinch with the acrylic, uh, much better and nicer compared to the gel. So I have cleaned my brush because I want to keep it in the shape. I have damaged so many brushes when I was beginning my journey with the, uh, with the acrylics. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. Um, with the gel, the pinching is pretty tricky because you have to apply the clamps and the gel kind of springs back. While the acrylic, you can really quite often just pinching in between your fingers like to get a nice uh, um, nice C-curve or just a tweezer will do the job as well. Uh, so that's a nice advantage um, of using the acrylic. And other ways, like, I mean, there is not much of the difference. I mean, they are two slightly different um, techniques, different glitter use it. I've got some milky white and blue marble on top of this one to get away the sparkle actually. Uh, but the shape wise, they kind of same really. Um, so I think it will be hard to spot it for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience, the difference in between the uh, gels and acrylics uh, when it comes to the shape of the nails uh, and the structure. Now this is still wet-ish, but I'm almost there and I will be able to start pinching in a minute. So much, much easier with the acrylics. This is actually, I think, a first ever glitter encapsulation I have done with the acrylic in all my life. I think so. Yeah, it is, because normally I have been doing only maybe a combo nails, which would be like I would build up the structure with the acrylic, like an extreme stiletto or a longer stiletto nails, or more like a French baby boomer. Yeah, I think it's the first ever glitter encapsulation. <laughs> oh gosh, this is embarrassing, like. But yeah, the main reason why I don't like the acrylics is the smell of it. Uh, and I think that's the mining. And another very important thing, guy, uh, guys, curing time, the full polymer polymerization of the acrylic. So first, let's talk about the setting time. So acrylic sets in about three minutes time. And setting time, that is when, when the product kind of feels hard to touch. Uh, this is a setting time. It is not curing time and it's not full polymerization time. The full polymerization for acrylics takes up to 40 uh, eight hours. Uh, so until this time, the product is not fully cured. And when you're filing an acrylic, take that into the consideration that you are filing the product which is not fully cured. And uncured product like is the product which can cause more, more allergies. Uh, so yeah, so my, my nail start like kind of um, setting and I am start squeezing it in between my fingers just to get a nice pinch. And also my fingers produce the heat, so the warmer it is, the, the sooner the process starts and the quicker it is. I take a tweezer. You could also use the Versi tool, like an, a pinching tool as well, which looks similar to the tweezers, but it's due the pressure on its own. I actually don't have it in here. I've got it in a salon. Um, or you could use the pinching clamps. Uh, I was a shame I didn't took the one for the acrylics because it looks slightly different than the one for the gel. It's a more plastic one. Um, now, so I'm just squishing the, the, the nail manually. You could do it kind of like with the tool which 
holds everything in place. But I love it, like you can see it, how nice and slender look we're starting getting. I also got some metal ones, and that's a pinching clamps for suitable for the acrylic. Uh, so they will hold the product like in place. I wouldn't use them for the gel just because they got the metal side and we want the gel to cure properly. So for the gel, I would use the clear ones just so they cure properly. I love extreme pinching. Like I wouldn't do it as extreme on the client. Probably with the clients, I would just go like with my fingers a little bit and then a little bit with the tweezers. And that would be plenty for my client. Um, unless they are annual technicians or they've got a really good good needles for a pinching. Uh, pinching very weak needles can cause um, a damage like to the natural needle. Even worse, when you would pinch the acrylic which is uh, too hard, uh, the acrylic could crack all the way. Like obviously when we pinching we be creating some pressure so uh, the, pr the, the product could like crack right down in the middle and that would be really dangerous for a client needles. Okay, so that's my nail pinched. And now I can shape it. So again, same like with the gel, like I, I'm not the person which likes lots of filing. Uh, so I'm trying to do most of my uh, work with the product application rather than with the filing. I'm almost there. Should actually give it a couple, couple more minutes because uh, this is a bit soft, but I can start gently filing. Uh, so I'm filing my side walls and I want them to go kind of into the V-shape. I mean, I have created most of this V-shape already. But I wanted it to be even more V-shape. I want my free edge to be nice and straight. Okay, so basically now I just need to smooth it all out, blend around the cuticle area. Okay, that starts think feeling much better for the filing. I don't have really much to file. But I really always concentrate on the uh, area where the cuticle is because that's where all the lifting starts. I also got a little bulk of the product here and I need to watch it to don't overfile my end um, to don't take away the glitter because I have put a very thin layer of the clear acrylic. It looks so nice from underneath as well. getting a wee fluffy bits and pieces out and now I can buff my nail. So I'm just taking a buffer. And going to nicely buff it in. So 
So it is some very um, easy way of creating kind of, kind of quick nail extensions. Because uh, you could just apply a couple crystals on top of it, or you could paint like a wee one stroke flowers, or do some 3D uh, acrylic flower over it, and it will look really nice and pretty. I just want to kind of remove the bulkage of the product I've got in there. And another thing, like I find it um, when you're filing uh, acrylics compared to the gel as well, you can see it like the, the dust is slightly different. The acrylic dust is much heavier than the gel. So when I was filing the gel, you could see me like covered in the dust, while with the acrylic you don't see that much. So this is a part which I like about the acrylic, that you don't, uh, the dust is like much heavier, so it's not flying as much. Now I'm taking a tiny bit of the blue scrap to kind of blend it, uh, the acrylic, because uh, it contains a tiny bit of the acetone in there as well, and uh, that's my nail finish. So I just have to wait for it to evaporate a little, a little bit, and then apply the uh, high shine no wipe top gel over it, just to keep it nice and sparkly. I hope you have really enjoyed it watching this very quick and easy tutorial um, on how to do an acrylic glitter encapsulation of those kind of like a wee cinderella nail and uh, yeah let me know down in the comments below what you think about it and i might i'm not promising but i might kind of keep the left hand for acrylics and the right hand for the gels um, because uh, obviously with my left hand there is no way I could pick up an acrylic brush, especially that I don't do it uh, it often. Uh, but there are some things which I could show you as well. Like, and I think uh, French would be a nice uh, example of like or a new but elongation or kind of more extreme uh, stiletto shapes. Because I really <coughs> love the using can. Um, we've got a really nice. Uh, makeover peach and makeover pink acrylic powders and they are really am amazing that's the um, colors i would use for a nail bed elongation and um, i think i could actually show you as well how to do this kind of combo style nails uh, but this is so nice and delicate like a kind of fairy fairy nails yeah and you have guys seen me working with the acrylics uh, so not much of the difference in between the shape i mean that's the kind of structure i like like so not overly uh, huge apex and not too thick nails in general and a coffin shape uh, quite strongly pinched <laughs> so so they look nice and slim yeah glittery hacks and bye for now <laughs>